Oh my god! I'm so sorry. Yeah, I'll call you back. Okay. One of my friends just called me. Her colleague at work went to have a fourth child. The three, the first three, natural uh, birth. The third one, the fourth one, she wanted to tie her tube, so she decided to go C-section, cesarean. Called on Wednesday that she's delivered, she's fine. Friday they get a call that um, she had passed. Just like that. I mean, how do you even deal with <laughs> such, such news? How, how is the husband going to cope? She's so young. How old is she? She's probably 33, 34. Wow. At her prime, I mean her parents. How do you even cope with such a... A loss. Yeah, a loss. That's devastating. It is devastating. My goodness. We'll have some nuts, guys. Thank you. I mean, I, I have been through certain incidences and certain issues where I, I, I felt like my whole world had come to an end, mm -hmm. you know. Um, when I started doing the one show, for instance, I mean, I got really, some really bad press about the fact that I, I was really bad. I was horrible. I was, a, I was a horrible presenter or host. And it was like, you know, I, I wake up in the morning, I'm driving to work. I see my beautiful uh, picture at the back of the graphic showbiz. I'm thinking, oh, what are people saying about me? And then I read and it says, Justin is not professional. She's, she sucks at what she does. Like she's you know, talentless. What is she doing there? Uh, why don't you get the, the producer of the show to come from behind the cameras and then be in, in Justin's place. She, you know, she's a better person to do the job. I mean, I, I don't even know how I drove to work, no. but, but, but I'm sure it doesn't compare to what you have been through, Laurie. <laughs> this is like child's play. Oh, you're looking at me like this girl. <laughs> <laughs> you, you know, in life, these things happen. Mm -hmm. Like, but like through it all, what I've realized is what other people think of you or say about you, it's not your business. Mm. Like, it's up to you. To, up to you to prove yourself wrong. It's up to you to make yourself better. Like, if you say you're going to go by what A, B, C, or whoever is going to say, you, you're not going to be, be a, a good person because mm. you're constantly going to live by their... their yeah. Yes. So yeah. I, I, I have learned not to listen to what people say because, trust me, people have a lot to say about me. People think they know me. Yeah. So they have a lot to say about me. Yeah. But one of the first encounters I had with dealing with what people had to say about me when they had no idea of my situation was I I got married at a very early age right after school mm -hmm. right after um, like when I was writing my papers there was a husband waiting for me oh, someone yeah. I didn't know someone I had no connection no chemistry no nothing he was 10 years older than what me what do you mean there's a husband waiting for you like are you my parents house? I, is your middle name Aisha? <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no. My middle name is not Aisha. But my parents were those kind of old school parents mm. who believed a woman's only whatever is you need to be your married. Place is married yeah. Yes, keep like, at home. You get it. So um, right before I finished. So they, they, ma they made, they match, they match make. Yeah, they match your, make me. They told yeah. me this guy. They look for a husband for you. Yes, basically. he was like he's good. He has a job, he's stable, you'll be sorted, that's it. Yeah. And uh, I remember I asked my mom, how about friendship, how about love? She was like, listen, this world, when you spend more time with people, you grow to love them. And I felt it was so unfair, but at that time in my life, I didn't have a voice. I wasn't, like, because my- How old were you? you I was 20, 22. Wow. You didn't yeah. have a voice? I didn't have a voice, because my whole <laughs> life, I was the first born, first child, girl. My dad, uh, my mom, my mom's first. So it's, it's like every day. Too much pressure on you. Yes. Yeah. I had to do things their way so that my little sisters will follow. So constantly, good grades, school perfect. You, you, you have to stay on top of your game. Yeah. So 
and you dare not talk back to my dad yeah. or my f mom. No, my yeah. mom was Fanti, my dad was Ashanti. So it was a bit of extreme. I couldn't receive, I didn't have friends. I didn't get to play with friends at home or they couldn't, they didn't come and visit me. I, did, I wasn't allowed to receive uh, phone, calls phone calls from- You uh, couldn't go to like fan fairs. No, 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 no. That would be my dreams. Um, and I quite remember when I was in uni, my first year, every time I came back from school, my mom would exchange phones with me. Yes, yeah, so if you're a guy and you call me, next thing you know, the policeman will be at your door because you're wow. trying to sleep with her daughter. But then, but then they, they think it's right to no, find you a husband. Trust me. <laughs> the irony. <laughs> the <Yes>. irony, right? <laughs> so they did all of that. That didn't change who me and my sisters were. We were still doing our things. Yeah, of course. You, you always find a way. Yes, you? Yeah. that is one thing I've learned. And because of that, I've become a better parent. I engage my daughter in conversation. Yeah. I want to know what she's about. Yeah. We have friendly conversations. So from that, um, uh, when they had this husband for me, I didn't know much about this guy. We got married like three, uh, three, four, five months later, right after school. I think I traveled for three months. I came back and they started the wedding preparation. The night... So, so wait, when, was that, when, when they started the wedding preparation, did you get to know him at least? Were you... I, I, I was, was around he, was, him. Was he visiting and stuff? I, uh, yeah. Was he, was he much older? He was 10 years older than me. And were you, were you intimate with him before you had, you had your wedding? Under the influence of alcohol. Because <laughs> so, that was my only savior. So because of that, like, I started drinking early because I used that to suppress my... So did, did you like him eventually, though? No. So this is... Uh, I'm getting that. So... <laughs> <laughs> so... Um, finally, when we started spending time together, I found out, like, we were nothing alike. I can't hold, hold conversations. He was very childish. Mm. He was grown, but he, like, he... I don't like to use harsh words, but he wasn't there. Yeah, was he educated? Not to my level. Mm -hmm. yeah. You get it. And I didn't like his friends. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, I'm from Kumasi. So Kumasi, you go sit down with these men and all they're talking about... I'm like, oh my God, how am I going to live the rest of my life with this, this man? man? How do I even introduce him to my friends? friends. This is my husband. Because he can't even have a full conversation in English. Like, I was dying. Mm. But oh, wow. then I had to do what I had to do. So, the night before the wedding, the engagement was over. The night before the wedding, he, um, I, was, I was raised Catholic. So, we went to have the final, you know, they do the rehearsal or whatever. So yeah. after that, the priest was like, he needs to have a word with me. So I, I, uh, I went in there with him and then he tells me, oh, so we've been keeping this away from you for like some months now, but since we announced that you guys were going to get married, another girl and her family came to tell us that the guy has impregnated their daughter. Wow. And I'm like, okay. 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 So this is this is the father who thought that you, the parents thought they knew the be, what's best well, for you. That was that was Wait, coming I'm, from the I'm, I'm coming. I'm coming. I'm coming. Your parents thought they, they knew the best for you, mm -hmm. but then they found you that man yeah. who was actually. So on what basis, on what basis are they picking a husband or yeah, a suitor because, for their daughter? Yeah, because yeah, because this suitor clearly. Yeah, they didn't do their homework. It's not suited. <laughs> no, like. So this day, I still blame my parents because mm -hmm. if they had allowed me, maybe, but I, c I don't have regrets. Yeah. Because everything is a learning yeah. process. Now, we're we're, we're going to continue this, but I mean, you know, we all have all these, all these things that we go through. But then for me, I, 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 I just want to know where you gather the strength from to be able to even even on your wedding day, for instance, how you wanted to run away. I mean, there are people who wouldn't even have the strength or the courage, or even speaking back at this man and telling him, "What are you doing here? I, I don't want to. I don't want to see you." You know, and they say you have you have a completely different um, situation because you know, I mean, she's my friend, and <laughs> I know I know that I I. I it's a very sensitive thing for me to talk about where, mm -hmm. where you're concerned, especially because you don't even look like somebody who is living with anything, yeah. you know? And for me, I think that I draw so much strength from you yeah. and the way you even behave. Like, I feel like, I feel like, honestly, because sometimes I'm like, do you, are you really sure that you're, 
you have um, sickle cell. Sickle cell. Yeah. Yes, very sure. And you've lived with it all your life. All well, my how life. have you been able to to overcome this? You, you can't overcome it. I know the pain is yeah. excruciating. I can't mm -hmm. even imagine. Mm -hmm. But how have you been able to just? How has it been for you, even growing up, knowing that this is something that is never going to go away. go go away? It's incredibly difficult. Mm. Um, you can have the support system of your family, of your friends, but no one actually knows what you're going through. Mm. And I think for the longest time, you don't know what you're going through. Growing up, I lived in a perpetual state of fear. Mm -hmm. Like I was always afraid. I, afraid of what? Afraid of death. Mm. Afraid mm. of the unknown. Mm -hmm. Because you would be sick and you would have crises and they would send you to the hospital and the doctors will patch you up and send you back home. But no one, no one was willing to deal with the emotional effect. So everyone would, you know, go back to their business. And it's not because they, you just don't know how to cope. Everyone is learning. Mm -hmm. um, and so it's like, okay, why am I better, but I'm worse? Mm -hmm. um, so it's, it's been incredibly tough. Mm -hmm. And my strength, and it's not, something I'm just saying mm -hmm. literally had to come from God. Mm -hmm. I have to ground myself in something that is bigger than me, mm -hmm. it has a greater purpose for mm -hmm. me. Um, otherwise, I wouldn't have been able to make it. Mm -hmm. I have wished death on myself multiple times. Because of the pain you're mm -hmm. going through. But sometimes don't you feel like when you're going through certain things, you, have, you want to blame it on somebody, i.e., in your case, like your parents, like, yes. guys, why didn't you check your, it's a genotype? Yes. To, to know before you, you even, before. You know, before you even had me, like, really, yeah. you know, sometimes when you go through that, you want to blame it on somebody. Blame it on someone. Yeah. Blame it on God mostly. Mm -hmm. I think for me, I blamed it on God mostly. For when I was younger, growing mm -hmm. up, I'm like, um, why? Did, why? 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 Why am why? I existing if I'm yeah. going to go through all why? this pain? Like what? Like this literally serves no purpose. Mm. That, that was just like my. Mm. This uh, there's no reason why this should be happening. Yeah. And um, my parents, I think, it was hard to blame them because you you saw them feel what guilty. You feel, okay. Y you know, mm. guilty. I, I have been through a situation where, you know, I was married, obviously, and I was going through all the emotional um, abuse, mm -hmm. you know, mental abuse uh, from my ex. And I wasn't happy. But then the thing is, I could not also talk to anybody because, again, family would say, mm -hmm. you know, he's, a, he's, a, he's, he's, a, he's your husband. You're, mm -hmm. Don't worry about it. You know, these give things will pass. God. You know, your auntie, give it to God. <laughs> Why do African God. parents like saying that? Give it to God. You know, you, you know, your auntie has been through it. We've all been through it. You're going to be okay. So I'm thinking, okay, I want to leave this guy. But how do I do it? Because mm. if I tell anybody, um, they'll talk me out of, out of it. So there are times my mother will call me on the phone. And I'm, I'm literally like in tears on the phone. I'm choked, but I'm like, I'm okay. And I'm trying to be all chirpy because she was going to ask me, why are you okay? And I probably would tell her what is going on. And then she might tell me, oh, Enyashe, don't leave, give it to God. So I had to, I had to manage it, you know, internally for a very long time until after I had my daughter and I decided, you know, the day that I had my daughter, I said, you know what? I need to find an exit plan. Because mm. once you're pregnant, you don't even know where you're going. You don't know mm. what you, I mean, where are you going to go with your, with your big stomach? You know what I mean? So you have to, you have to strategize. You have to plan. And then once I did that, I decided that I was going to, and nobody saw it coming. Everybody was shocked. You know? Yeah. So when you were going through, I mean, I, I think I had conversations with God a few times, you know, but not as often. But I, I spoke to nobody. Mm. But I'm sure you had somebody that you were confiding in during the times you're going through all the un unpleasant things in your life. Uh, I think the only person, mm, not really, just recently my sister. But at the time? At that you, time, no. Not I, even your best friend, the, no, the maid of honor? No, I was a sponge for a long time. Why? Like I would, because I was afraid of what people would say about mm -hmm. me. Because there you go, you just had this big wedding. You, you, you have three cars. You have, people don't see you have problems. 
So they would just think you're nagging, you're just being too much. They'll judge you wrongly. Yes. But then mm. at the end of the day, I know the shoe and I know how tight it is. And mm. I know I can't breathe. So I feel like no one was in the, like, in the right position, like she was saying. People, you can talk to people, but then they don't know exactly how you're feeling. Because mm -hmm. at that time, none of my friends were married. Mm -hmm. So they don't know much about having, b being like caught up with a man you don't love. Waking up every day thinking about, oh my God. Did, he ever, did he ever hit you? Did oh. he ever? No, no, he never hit me. Mm -hmm. But he, his words hit me. It's like that, you know, when a man, will pass a comment like, yo, fine, fine, you say you're going to leave me. If you leave me, you won't be anybody. You can't do anything with your life. Who's going to want you with one child? Who's going to, you get it. You know, yeah. that's how men break you. Yeah. You get it. Yeah. And then finally, when I decided to leave him, he never showed up to court. Mm -hmm. I came t and his way of punishing me to this day is not taking care of his daughter. Are you serious? Yeah, that's his way. His, that is payback. But that's, I, I think that's very irresponsible. Yes, that, 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 he thinks maybe if he sends money for his kids, I'll get some, a little bit. And take care of yourself. And take care of myself. And he wants to suffer. And he wants me to suffer. God being so great. Uh, two men have done this to me, and I haven't been better in my life since they left my life. Two men? Oh, yeah. So your, your first, the first husband, you left him. You but, got a divorce. Yeah, I got a divorce. Mm -hmm. when my daughter was a baby because mm -hmm. he did never showed up in court but uh the judge was like since he's not showing up they can Enough i can get the divorce mm -hmm. but then no early money so do i want to wait so that they will get i'm like you know what at this point i just want my freedom mm. so i got that divorce and then i went back why did you wait so long to get a divorce i know right from the beginning you should have just <laughs> i didn't have the strength so I think where did you get the strength from when i left ghana okay I think I got outside influence. I met How long did you stay abroad for, away for? I, 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 like, I, I stayed there for seven to eight years. So wait, you had your daughter, your first child in the US? Yes. And you stayed in the US with her till she was about seven or eight years? Yes, I know. And you came back to Ghana? To start and, afresh. To, and start, to ask your husband for No, the for divorce, divorce, I did it when she was a baby. So you came to Ghana to ask for the divorce? Yes. And then you went back to the US? And I went back. Okay. And okay. I went back. What took you so long? To ask for the divorce. I was afraid. Afraid that what? My parents. Oh, what was the worst that would happen? My parents. So what changed? When what you changed? Came back? When I went there, I decided that I can't do this no more, and I did it. And what I was afraid of actually happened. Because I got the divorce, I came back. I didn't tell my dad. I came back. My dad kicked me out. Winter time, New York City, in the streets. With your daughter? No, I left my daughter in Ghana because mm -hmm. I couldn't do that whole looking for a job. I left my daughter with my mom. My dad kicked me out. None of my dad's parents was willing to help. At that point, my mom was starting to warm up to the idea that, oh, we messed up. Maybe she's not happy. Yes. So my mom was like, somebody would be like, mommy, you never, you'll be okay. You'll be okay. And then when I got the divorce and I came back and my dad did that, they were going through issues of their own. Mm -hmm. So it wasn't like they were going to come together to help me because mm -hmm. they were also going through their divorce. Mm -hmm. So it was like, my, my, my dad was like, you are trying to be like your mom, mm -hmm. basically. Basically. So he kicked me out. Mm. <laughs> That's, the, when this man kicked me out, I think my whole life, that's the worst thing that's happened to me because Growing up, I grew up very sheltered. I didn't know my way around certain things. This is somebody that every bill has been paid for me. I recently started working. Like, I don't know, I don't even know my way around New York. And you kick me out winter time. Because of... Um, because man. I decided to go against your no, wish. And I didn't speak to that man till last year. Really? Yes. That was, that was a breaking moment for you? Yes, that was it for me. I lost all family values. Because when my dad put his foot down, that like he didn't want anything to do with me, none of his family members wanted anything to do with me. I was on my own. It was just my mom from time to time. I was on my, I think that was what made me hard. 
do, do you think he was he was living his life through you? Like he wanted you to be married. He wanted he he, he had a picture perfect I think, idea for you. Yeah, I think my dad my dad to this day I think is still old school because even though we just started talking, sometimes he asked me he's like, "Mommy, don't think you are too old because you have two kids now. You don't want to get married." You, I'm like, "Please." When the man comes, I'll, I'll bring him. Mm. Let's not visit this topic. Yeah. So he still wants me in a man's house. It's not like it's changed. Mm. It hasn't changed because he's worried about me. He calls my little, my baby sister, and it's like, is she dating? Does she have a man in her life? Yeah, but he's worried, so that's, that's a good no. worry. No. Worry shouldn't let you force something on someone. Someone, yeah. I have grown to realize that you don't need a man to complete you of course yes. if it yeah if it comes it comes but if it doesn't life goes on so I would say that was my breaking point and that's where I got my strength because if that man hadn't kicked me out I wouldn't know how to start things from scratch start something from mm. nothing I wouldn't be able to take certain risks I've taken since that point till now. Till now. Yes. So let me see, you, uh, let's talk about some of your lowest, lowest moments. Lowest moments. Um, wow. You, you've had a lot of them, haven't I've you? Had <laughs> <a lot laughs> of them. I was like, wow. I've had a lot of them. There was, I think in 2013, I was sick, really sick. Mm -hmm. And no one in Ghana could tell me what was happening. Mm -hmm. They knew that she had sickle cell, but no one could say, what's causing it. I would go to the hospital, get discharged, go the next day, get discharged. I had six crises in two weeks. What? Yes, I was so bad. And Kolebu was saying, bring her, we'll isolate her, put her in the ICU. And um, my parents were devastated. A doctor had spoken to my parents and said, I think you should start thinking about writing her obituary. Are you serious? They talk, yeah. Doctors talk like that? Yeah, they do. They are, do. They, are they allowed to though? Ah, That's a whole <laughs> different issue on its <laughs> own. So, but my mom, very grounded in faith. She's like, absolutely not. But you know, it's like the reality sets in that this is bad. Yeah. Um, so my dad scrambled, did everything he could, got me an air ambulance to take me from Ghana to the UK. And when I was leaving, as I, they like ushered me into the plane, it was just me and a doctor and the pilot. There was um, nobody else. Nobody else, Whoa. just me. My mom had gone the day before so I could be um, met by her yeah. when I arrived and my dad had to stay behind and make sure everything was fine. fine. He was coming the next day and when I was on the runway, I'm like, I'm not coming back. Wow. I'm like, and I had to make my peace with not coming back. Like, was this is all it? Like, is this the end? What, 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 I mean, I, what are those moments like when you see your life flashing? Before your eyes. Before your eyes. It's like, what do you, what do, you do? I like, think you take inventory of your life <laughs> and when it's like, yeah. am I pleased with who I've been yeah. quickly? And then you are afraid. Like you're afraid of everything you're going to yeah. miss, everyone you're going to miss. So at that moment, are you like drained? Are you in pain? Are you numb? You are surprisingly calm in your fear. Mm. Calming your fear. Yeah. Mm. Surprisingly calming your fear. Mm. So when, when you got when you got to, when you got to the UK, then then when I got to the UK, things got better. I, like I never underestimate, like just the testimony that is my life yeah. because things just turned around so quickly. quickly. And even the doctors had no idea how I got better how this happened. Yeah. Um, my doctor in the UK is like always makes jokes. I don't know how you're here. You're <laughs> like a risk factor. Yeah. Um, I know sometimes you go to the hospital and you're like, hey, you're about 30 and you're still here. And you're, oh yeah. Like, I think... Well, apparently.